the warm summer sun slowly ascends above the Istanbul horizon, a young Muslim woman prepares for another week of work. She begins the morning by reading a news magazine. Most of Istanbul's population starts the day much later, but Janan is a teaching assistant at Bashishir, a local university. Every day she must leave for work before 7 a.m. Turkey has the eighth highest percentage of smokers in the world, with 44% of its citizens smoking cigarettes. Janan is no different. We will travel with Janan through the smog-filled streets of Istanbul, Turkey, and remove the smoky misconceptions surrounding this very modern, yet ancient city. Outsiders from Europe and the United States have the wrong perception about being a woman in Istanbul. All of the women living in Turkey are not covered. At least I can say that I don't know anybody who wears a kerchief in my environment. Turkey is known as an Islamic nation, but this does not mean that people have to obey radical Islamic rules. Because of the foundation of the Turkish Republic in 1923, the women are much more modern when compared to Iran, Syria, or other Arabic countries. Although there are oppressions, especially in Eastern Turkey, my country is not as conservative as it is considered to be in the West. As the Friday workday comes and goes, the classrooms empty out and the hallways become still. Jonan stays late in her office to catch up on her work for the week. She's not in any particular rush to get home this night. She knows that the letter from Scotland may be waiting for her there. Behind Janin is a portrait of Mustafa Kemal Pasha. Mustafa stands as one of the world's few historic figures who dedicated their lives totally to their nations. In 1919, Mustafa Kemal Pasha landed in the Black Sea port of Samsun to start the War of Independence. Following the Turkish triumph at two major battles in western Turkey, the Grand National Assembly conferred on Mustafa Kemal Pasha the title of Commander-in-Chief. At the end of August 1922, the Turkish armies won their ultimate victory. Within a few weeks, the Turkish mainland was completely liberated, the armistice signed, and the rule of the Ottoman dynasty abolished. The national government signed the Lausanne Treaty with Great Britain, France, Greece, Italy, and others. On October 29, 1923, the Turkish Republic was proclaimed and Mustafa Kemal Pasha was unanimously elected President of the Republic. In 1934, the National Parliament gave him the name Ataturk, which means Father of the Turks. In Ataturk's 15-year presidency, he created a new political and legal system, made both government and education secular, changed the alphabet, advanced the arts and sciences, and gave equal rights to women putting aside the fez, the veil, and the harem. 
It is amazing that almost 80 years ago, the radical ideas and reformation started by Ataturk, the man who founded the new Turkish Republic with many democratic ideals, has given Janin this opportunity today. Outside, the streets of Istanbul are bustling with life on a typical Friday evening. Before heading home, Jonan decides to take some time to shop and absorb the experiences that only the Istanbul streets can offer. The walk Jonan takes tonight has been a walk she has taken many times. She knows that she might not be here next term and wants to enjoy some of Istanbul's nightlife. Her journey home takes her down Independence Avenue leading her past a movie theater which is showcasing the new Star Wars movie, Revenge of the Sith. However, there is no time for a movie this evening. The sun begins to set, and the Turkish city becomes bathed in a golden yellow. Jonan travels back to the place where her week began. The view is beautiful this night, and the sounds of city life can be heard all around her.